Isaiah was the 8th century BC Jewish prophet for whom the Book of Isaiah is named. Within the text of the Book of Isaiah, Isaiah himself is referred to as the prophet, but the exact relationship between the Book of Isaiah and any such historical Isaiah is complicated. The traditional view is that all 66 chapters of the Book of Isaiah were written by one man, Isaiah, possibly in two periods between 740 BCE and c. 686 BCE, separated by approximately 15 years, and includes dramatic prophetic declarations of Cyrus the Great in the Bible, acting to restore the nation of Israel from Babylonian captivity. Another widely held view is that parts of the first half of the book chapters 1 originated with the historical prophet, interspersed with prose commentaries written in the time of King Josiah a hundred years later, and that the remainder of the book dates from immediately before and immediately after the end of the exile in Babylon, almost two centuries after the time of the historic prophet. Biography. <inaudible> <inaudible> The first verse of the book of Isaiah states that Isaiah prophesied during the reigns of Uzziah or Azariah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah Isaiah chapter 1 verse 1. Uzziah's reign was 52 years in the middle of the 8th century BCE, and Isaiah must have begun his ministry a few years before Uzziah's death, probably in the 740s BCE. Isaiah lived until the 14th year of Hezekiah's reign who died 698 BCE. He may have been contemporary for some years with Manasseh. Thus Isaiah may have prophesied for as long as 64 years. According to some modern interpretations, Isaiah's wife was called the prophetess. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 3, either because she was endowed with the prophetic gift like Deborah, Judges chapter 4 verse 4, and Huldah, 2 Kings chapter 22 verses 14 to 20, or simply because she was the wife of the prophet. They had two sons, naming one Sheer Jashub, meaning a remnant shall return, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 3, and the younger, Mar Shalal Hash Baz, meaning, spoil quickly, plunder speedily, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 3. Soon after this, Shalmaneser V determined to subdue the kingdom of Israel, taking over and destroying Samaria 722 BCE. So long as Ahaz reigned, the kingdom of Judah was untouched by the Assyrian power. But when Hezekiah gained the throne, he was encouraged to rebel against the king of Assyria, 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 7, and entered into an alliance with the king of Egypt Isaiah chapter 30 verses 2 to 4. The king of Assyria threatened the king of Judah, and at length invaded the land. Sennacherib 701 BC led a powerful army into Judah. Hezekiah was reduced to despair, and submitted to the Assyrians 2 Kings chapter 18 verses 14 to 16. But after a brief interval, war broke out again. Again Sennacherib led an army into Judah, one detachment of which threatened Jerusalem Isaiah chapter 36 verses 2 to 22, 37 to 8. Isaiah on that occasion encouraged Hezekiah to resist the Assyrians 37 to 1-7, whereupon Sennacherib sent a threatening letter to Hezekiah, which he spread before the Lord, 37 to 14. Then Isaiah the son of Amoz sent unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, whereas thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib king of Assyria. This is the word which the Lord hath spoken concerning him, The virgin daughter of Zion hath despised thee and laughed thee to scorn, the daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou taunted and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice? Yea, thou hast lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel, 37-21-23. According to the account in 2 Kings chapter 19 and its derivative account in 2 Chronicles chapter 32 an angel of God fell on the Assyrian army and 185,000 of its men were killed in one night. Like Xerxes in Greece, Sennacherib never recovered from the shock of the disaster in Judah. He made no more expeditions against either the southern Levant or Egypt. The remaining years of Hezekiah's reign were peaceful 2 CHR 32 -29. Isaiah probably lived to its close, and possibly into the reign of Manasseh. The time and manner of his death are not specified in either the Bible or other primary sources. The Talmud says that he suffered martyrdom by being sawn in two under the orders of Manasseh. 
According to rabbinic literature, Isaiah was the maternal grandfather of Manasseh. Some writers assert that Isaiah was a vegetarian, on the basis of passages in the Book of Isaiah that extol nonviolence and reverence for life, such as Isaiah chapter 1 verses 11, 11, 6 to 9, 65 to 25, and 66 to 3. Some of these writers refer to the vegetarian Isaiah, the notorious vegetarian Isaiah, and Isaiah, the vegetarian prophet. The book of Isaiah, along with the book of Jeremiah, is distinctive in the Hebrew Bible for its direct portrayal of the wrath of the Lord, as presented, for example, in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 19 stating, Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts as the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. In Christianity The Ascension of Isaiah, a pseudographical Christian text dated to sometime between the end of the first century to the beginning of the third, gives a detailed story of Isaiah confronting an evil false prophet and ending with Isaiah being martyred, none of which is attested in the original biblical account. Gregory of Nyssa c. believed that the prophet Isaiah knew more perfectly than all others the mystery of the religion of the gospel. Jerome c. 342 also lauds the prophet Isaiah, saying, He was more of an evangelist than a prophet, because he described all of the mysteries of the Church of Christ so vividly that you would assume he was not prophesying about the future, but rather was composing a history of past events. Of specific note are the Songs of the Suffering Servant, which Christians say are a direct prophetic revelation of the nature, purpose, and detail of the death of Jesus Christ. The book of Isaiah is quoted many times by New Testament writers. Ten of those references are about the suffering servant, how he will suffer and die to save many from their sins, be buried in a rich man's tomb, and be a light to the Gentiles. The Gospel of John says that Isaiah saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. The Eastern Orthodox Church celebrates Saint Isaiah the prophet on May 9. Latter-day Saints The Book of Mormon quotes Jesus Christ as stating that, "...great are the words of Isaiah," and that all things prophesied by Isaiah have been and will be fulfilled. The Book of Mormon and Doctrine and Covenants also quote Isaiah more than any other prophet from the Old Testament. Additionally, members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints consider the founding of the Church by Joseph Smith in the 19th century to be a fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 11, the translation of the Book of Mormon to be a fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 29, and the building of Latter-day Saint temples as a fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2. In Islam Although Isaiah, or his Arabic name Ashia transliterated, Ashi Ya, are not mentioned by name in the Quran or the Hadith, Muslim sources have accepted him as a prophet. Some Muslim scholars, such as Ibn Kathir and Kisai, reproduced Jewish traditions regarding Isaiah, which were transmitted through early Jewish converts to Islam. Isaiah is mentioned as a prophet in Ibn Kathir's story of Prophet Isaiah, and the modern writers Muhammad Asad and Abdullah Yusuf Ali accepted Isaiah as a true Hebrew prophet, who preached to the Israelites following the death of King David. Isaiah is well known in Muslim exegesis and literature, notably for his predictions of the coming of Jesus and Muhammad. Isaiah's narrative in Muslim literature can be divided into three sections. The first establishes Isaiah as a prophet of Israel during the reign of Hezekiah, the second relates Isaiah's actions during the siege of Jerusalem by Sennacherib, and the third warns the nation of coming doom. Muslim exegesis preserves a tradition parallel to the Hebrew Bible, which states that Hezekiah was king in Jerusalem during Isaiah's time. Hezekiah heard and obeyed Isaiah's advice, but could not quell the turbulence in Israel. This tradition maintains that Hezekiah was a righteous man and that the turbulence worsened after him. After the death of the king, Isaiah told the people not to forsake God, and he warned Israel to cease from its persistent sin and disobedience. Muslim tradition maintains that the unrighteous of Israel in their anger sought to kill Isaiah. 
In a death that resembles that attributed to Isaiah in Lives of the Prophets, Muslim exegesis recounts that Isaiah was martyred by Israelites by being sawn in two. In the courts of al Mamun, the seventh Abbasid caliph, Ali al Ridda, the great grandson of Muhammad and prominent scholar Imam of his era, was questioned by the high Jewish rabbi to prove the prophethood of both Jesus and Muhammad through the Torah. Among his several proofs, the Imam references the book of Isaiah, stating, Shahya Isaiah, the prophet, said in the Torah concerning what you and your companions say, I have seen two riders to whom he illuminated earth. One of them was on a donkey and the other was on a camel, who is the rider of the donkey, and who is the rider of the camel, to which the rabbi was unable to answer with certainty. al Rida clarifies that. As for the rider of the donkey, he is Isa Jesus, and as for the rider of the camel, he is Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family. Do you deny that this statement is in the Torah, to which the rabbi responds, No, I do not deny it. In Judaism According to the rabbinic literature, Isaiah was a descendant of the royal house of Judah and Tamar he was the son of Amaz, not to be confused with prophet Amos, who was the brother of King Amaziah of Judah. Talmud tractate Megillah 15a. Equals equals notes.